A cordial greeting. Today is Monday, August 5, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I will be providing an update on a strong tropical wave currently crossing the Lesser Antilles, which has a low probability of cyclonic development as it moves westward over the Caribbean Sea. Some models show the possibility of developing into a tropical depression over the next seven days as it moves through the Western Caribbean or the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Therefore, it is important for residents of Central America and the Yucatan Peninsula to continue monitoring its progress. At the end of the video, we will talk about a new tropical wave that will come from Africa, and also find marginally favorable conditions for development in about 7 to 10 days. On the other hand, and briefly, I wanted to mention that Hurricane Debbie has already entered northern Florida, and is now heading towards Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, where it will bring excessive rainfall with potentially catastrophic flooding this week. If you want to learn more about this forecast, I invite you to watch a video I recorded earlier today. Without further ado, let's zoom into the Caribbean region. Here you can see the strong tropical wave generating some showers for parts of the southern Lesser Antilles and for Trinidad and Tobago. According to the latest projections, in the next 24 hours, between 30 to 50 millimeters of rain could fall in Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. The tropical wave will then continue its path westward or west-northwest, and once it reaches the waters of the Western Caribbean, it will find better conditions for cyclonic development possibly forming a tropical depression by the end of this week. Remember, throughout its path, it will be passing over extremely warm sea surface temperatures. And this, combined with wind shear that will be below normal, will create favorable conditions for development, provided the center consolidates over Caribbean waters and doesn't pass near Central America. We can see these different scenarios in the global model projections. Let's start with the GFS model. Notice that during Wednesday, the tropical wave amplifies just south of Jamaica and eventually maintains a path near or over northern Honduras, where it develops a low-pressure system east of Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. However, due to interaction with land, it doesn't develop into a tropical depression until at least next Saturday. Once it reaches the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, the GFS model projects that a tropical depression or tropical storm could develop. However, this is a long-term forecast, and we don't know exactly which area might be threatened by this potential future cyclone. On the other hand, we also have the European model projection, which shows something very similar to the American model. Notice that the tropical wave amplifies towards the north of Panama and Costa Rica, developing a low-pressure system that can move over Nicaragua and Honduras in the coming days. In this case, as it consolidates further south, it would interact with land in Central America, which could limit its cyclonic development. Therefore, the chances of development for this tropical wave depend on whether it can stay further north over Caribbean waters. However, if it remains further south and moves over Nicaragua and Honduras, the chances of development will be minimal. We can see these different scenarios in the GFS ensemble members. Some have a path over Central America, and in this case, they do not develop a tropical cyclone while others with a more northern path over western Caribbean waters do develop a tropical depression or tropical storm by next weekend. It is precisely for this reason that the National Hurricane Center maintains a 30% chance of development, so everything will depend on the path this tropical wave takes. The European model ensemble also agrees with this idea. Those with a more southern path keep it fairly weak, while some with a more northern path and over the Yucatan Peninsula see better long-term development chances. In summary, it is important for residents of Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, and the western Gulf of Mexico states to continue monitoring the progress of this tropical wave. In the coming days, we will talk about the possible effects it could have across Central America and Southern Mexico. Before I go, I also wanted to mention that we will be monitoring another tropical wave that will come from Africa. You can see that almost all the European model ensemble members see the development of a tropical depression or tropical storm. However, these are long-term projections, so we will have many days to monitor it calmly. Although most members seem to favor a path towards the northeastern Caribbean, it is still very early to know how close or far it will pass from the northeastern Caribbean. In fact, we can see this tropical wave in the infrared satellite animation currently in this region, and it has good rotation. So, in a couple of days, when it reaches the Atlantic waters, we will begin to monitor it closely. Well, that's all for the update on the tropical situation here at Hurricane Info. We will continue monitoring this tropical wave, and so you don't miss any of the videos I'll be recording in the coming days, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video, click the red button that says subscribe, and then click the bell so you get notifications when I record new videos. I hope everyone has an excellent day. See you in the next video.